looking for, uh, zebra stripes allow you to do all of that. Now, of course, we have to be able to accommodate internal components within this design. So the next important feature that we need to add would be a thin wall. In order to do that, I'm going to identify the thin wall command. In this case, we're going to go with a one millimeter uh, thickness. And we'll go ahead and use the preview button. We really, at this point, will not o identify any open faces. And so we go ahead and finish. Now, we obviously can't really tell whether the thin wall command, well, we know that it worked, but we, it's hard to kind of tell that. But if you want to go to a, uh, a wireframe view, obviously you can, you can see uh, that it, does, it is thin walled out. But if we want to go to the view command, you notice we have a thing called set planes where we can set some clipping planes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on, uh, I'm going to go from the right view and turn on dynamic clipping. And as I, as I move that clipping plane, you notice we can clip out that model. And you can see where that model is hollow now. So we now can... Uh, view internal components within our design, or we can actually, you know, stick our components within the design. So the thin wall command was uh, successful for sure. So we can turn that uh, back off once we're done. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and save this design. And then what we'll do is we'll go back uh, to the top level of our model. And let's kind of take a look and see uh, what uh, this is starting to look like against the industrial design's ideas. And you can see that uh, our boss and our cutout, our hand cutout, is following along the lines of the ideas that the industrial uh, designist had for us. Now you can see where the switch will stick out of the boss and again where the cutout was for the hand. So we're looking really good as far as uh, the industrial designs ideas were. Again, I'm going to go ahead and do a save here. Now, the next thing that we want to do uh, is is go ahead and, and use a command we call uh, divide part. In order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and open uh, this uh, solid edge model. And uh, once we get in here, uh, I always like to do a save just to make sure that everything's kosher. I'm going to open up um, the sketches command, and I'm going to turn on one uh, 2D sketch called split uh, surf curve. And under the surfacing command, I'm going to use that curve to build a uh, um, a surface. And in this case, I want to go in both directions. I want to make sure I extend past uh, the actual model that we have. And then I can come back and turn off that curve. Once that's completed, we can come up to, and again, I always like to continually do save just to make, uh, just uh, because I know that the divide part will ask us to save the part. And then it'll ask us to select the surface or plane and then select a, a direction. And when you click on finish, it's going to bring up a dialog. And you'll notice that it shows the top and the bottom. So in this case, we want to call this top. And we want to call this bottom. And you can see that it's putting it in the working folder. Then what we want to do is select them and basically save those two new components. Now it's just taking the surface and it's dividing this one single model into two separate models called top and bottom.par. But we still are not utilizing those two parts yet. Now we can go ahead and close. Turn off our extrude. And what we want to do is go back uh, and go back. So what we can do is go ahead and close. We've already saved the model, so go back to the top level assembly. Now once we're at this top level assembly, I'm going to uh, go uh, external from this particular file and use the run macro command. 
And basically, I'm going to use a command found in this hand mixer demo set under Rebuild Divide Part. I'm going to pick an executable called Rebuild Divide Part. Now, if you remember, in the Divide Part, we just created a top and bottom part. And what I'd like to do is to take those two parts and actually build an assembly from those two components. You can see that this is already looking in the working folder and there's the bottom part that I want to select and I'm just going to wait till it actually highlights that part and then I'm going to hold my control key down and I'm going to select the top part and now it selects both of them and as we rotate or they're both there and as we rotate you can see that uh, that part is there so let's go ahead and run the process and what it's going to do is going to take those two parts and very quickly build an assembly from those two parts. You notice how it put them together. And there's my top and bottom part. So at that point, what I want to do is I want to do a save. And in the working folder, I'm just going to call this my new assembly and do a save. Then I can close that assembly assembly that I just created. Now when we get back to our top level assembly you'll notice that the hand mixer again is just still that single part. Well what we can do in Solid Edge is we can simply right mouse button click and in this case what I want to do is I want to replace this single part with that new assembly. So what I'm going to do is pick that new assembly made up of the two parts we created from the single part and you'll see that it will take and replace that single part with our new assembly made up of the top and bottom part. Now when that's done, the next thing that I'm going to do is to uh, identify that new assembly. And what I want to do is I want to bring that top and bottom part just to the top level. I don't really need this new assembly as a subassembly. So I can use the disperse command and it's going to transfer the parts in the assembly to the next higher level. And you'll see what it does is it now actually places the top part, the bottom part, and the top part in my assembly. Now I'm actually working with two independent parts as opposed to one solid model. If I turn off the uh, the top, the uh, top, I have a. I, you can see the how the bottom was created, and if I turn off the bottom, you can see inside this particular component. So let's go into this top part and finish up our design. So I'll go ahead and edit this particular uh, model. Um, I'm going to turn off uh, the base reference planes and the coordinate system, and as I rotate this model around. The first thing I want to do is come in and uh, add a what we refer to as a, a plastic part, what we refer to as a lip or a groove. So I'm going to go and use this lip command, which will create actually a lip or a groove in your model. And then you can clip these two parts together. So basically one part would have a groove and the other part would have a lip in it. As long as they're the right size, they'll fit right together. We'll go ahead and identify those uh, four elements, which basically incorporates all the inside edge of this part and we'll go ahead and accept that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. It's only one millimeter thick uh, thin wall so I'm going to use a width of 50 and a height of 1 and basically you just want your uh, in this case we'll build a lip up so you want to pull that dynamic preview of that to the upside of the model and you can see that it's automatically going to create uh, that lip for us. Basically you would in place activate into the bottom and then create a, uh, a groove or a lip on that part to fit uh, uh, so that these parts fit uh, together as they should. The final feature that we want to create is the cutout uh, for uh, the, the uh, actual switch for the hand mixer. We're going to go to the cutout command and using coincident reference plane Let's go ahead and uh, grab the, uh, in this case, let's go ahead and grab the top reference plane. It really doesn't matter. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a line segment. So I'm just going to basically pick up uh, center and just pull a line off. 
And then what I want to do is use a symmetric offset. And in this case, we're going to use an 8 uh, for our width and a 4 for our radius. And we're going to use the arc option and apply radius, if fillet uh, radius, and go ahead and uh, click on the OK button. Identify and accept, and you'll see that it automatically builds a symmetric offset of that line. When that's complete, it gives us the shape that we're looking for, and we can simply uh, pull it up and remove that material. And now our design is complete. So we've added a lip on this part. We've also added a cutout. At that point, we can go back to the top level of our assembly, turn on the bottom part, continue adding features if we need to, but for our this particular hand mixer design in this demonstration, this, particular, uh, this particular demonstration completes the design of the hand mixer uh, body. Next, we'll move into uh, things more focused on assembly uh, design.